the materials. So, so these are some books that I recommend you. You don't need to buy, but if you have a chance, or if you have some spare money, then you, you, you can buy it. Or the library should have it. So I, I call them as references. So the first one is the introduction to combinatorial mathematics. So this is the first book, and this textbook is by C.L. Liu. C.L. Liu. So, so we should use this textbook because of what? Because, because of what? Because Professor Liu was was our our president, some 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 time ago, right? Uh, probably some of you know, right? Liu, Liu Tonglang. He, he was, so, so I talked about this yesterday, so let's count. So this current president is He Chen Hong, am I correct? And then the previous one should be Chen Li Jun, right? And then the, the, the previous one is like Chen Wen Chen, is it? And then before Chen Wen Chen, I think one or two president is this one, it's Liu Zhonglang. So he is also with, with our department. He is one of the, one of the um, how do you call this? Distinguished, uh, what, what kind of professors of our department, head professors or chief prof professors of our department. So, so his textbook is used in many famous schools uh, around the world, especially in US. So yeah, so in Princeton, in Harvard, in MIT. So, so it, it is a very old book, but it is uh, a good one. So I'm selecting some of the topics based on this textbook, probably one, two, three. And then there is another one. This one, there is a course offered in our school by uh, Professor Cai, Cai Mingzhe. OK, and then, yeah, this is a. Mm, yeah, take his course, uh, it's a good one. So, so this textbook is by three people. One is the Graham, the other one is Knuth, and the last one is Patash Nick, something like this. Patash Nick. Okay. So, this is an interesting textbook. Okay. So it has a very special name. Before that, I believe nobody talks about a math as concrete math. Okay. So concrete math, according to the authors, it means con comes from continuous. Crete comes from discrete. So it actually talks about discrete mathematics, but it uses continuous technique to, to solve it. So they are so difficult to imagine, but you just imagine that when you are doing summation things, of summation of like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, okay, this, this summation of 1 to n. So these are discrete objects, right? But you use, you use continuous method to, to, to solve this. Or maybe you are, you are trying to prove some, some uh, formula is correct. Apart, you are going to use differentiation or integration to help. So this textbook is, yeah, take, take Professor Time in this course. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is going to be a very interesting one. And then, yeah, and the author says that if you can find out what? Find out any mistakes in the, in the textbook, they will give you some money. Like one cent of US dollars, so one cent. Yeah, but, but so far, so far, I, I have heard that nobody has picked any mistakes there. Okay, so, so this is a very serious written textbook. The third one, this is a fun book. So this is called Proofs from the Book. Ah. Actually, I should write book in this way. 
so it is like B O O K. Okay, there are two authors, Eigner and then Siegler. Eigner, Siegler. Okay, so this book contains a lot of proofs, a lot of proofs of a lot of theorems, like from simple one, the Pythagoras theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or it can be very number theory related. Like for any number, let's say, take a number 10, OK? Between 10 and 2 times of this number, 20, there must be a prime inside. OK, so between 10 and 20, there must be a prime. So there can be a lot of primes, right? 11 is a prime, 13 is a prime, 17 is a prime, 19 is a prime. But it doesn't matter. We can always find a prime between 10 and 20. OK, you pick any number, like 1,000. So 1,000 and 2,000, between 1,000 and 2,000, there must always be at least a prime inside. OK, so it can, it will talk about proofs of these kind of theorems. OK, simple one, Pythagoras theorem, this one, it can be hard. But what is most interesting of this textbook is that it is called Proofs from the Book. So the book, so what is the book? What is the book? OK, the book, someone says, a famous mathematician says, so I will tell you the famous mathematicians later. One of the famous mathematicians says that there, if there is a god in the world, this god must be holding a book. This book contains all the proofs of the, mathematicians, uh, of the mathematics theorem. And then the proofs has to be very simple. The shortest, the most elegant proofs in, 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 in God's hand. Okay. And then what he says that is that it is the mathematician's task to find out what is the proofs inside this God's book. Do you understand my point? So God is holding a book that contains the best proof. And then, but of course, we, we don't know, right? And then for any mathematicians, then the, the task is, is that when you are looking at a theorem, you want to search for a proof, you, you search for the best proof, the most elegant or shortest or easy to understand proof. And then this is, this is so-called the book. And then, and then proofs from the book is to, is to collect a lot of interesting proofs of a lot of interesting theorems in the honor of this mathematician. And this mathematician is a famous one. I, I hope, I, I'm not sure, but I hope that some of you may have heard of him. So his name is called Paul Erdős. So uh, I think a Hungarian mathematician who died already. And then this one, so according to to people known so far, so he has the most number of uh, publications ever. Okay, so there are two persons with most number of publication. One is called Euler. Euler is even earlier. Okay, Euler is the mathematician who has the most number of pages of publication. So if you add up his publication in the number of pages. Then Euler is like this. Nobody has, has published more than Euler. So Euler has publications in math and also in, in, in something very strange, like, like what? Like building, building a ship or whatever. Okay. And then this Paul Edish, Paul Edish is, is the one with the most number of publications. So one paper, okay, he writes another paper, and then he writes another paper, and so on and so forth. And then Paul Edish is a very special person, okay. He doesn't hold a, 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 a what? Uh, he's not a professor. He doesn't hold a regular position. He travels around the world. Travels around the world, go to this place, works with mathemat mathematicians here, go to another place, work with math mathematicians there. In particular, Graham is one of the collaborators of this edition. He works with so many mathematicians. I guess he's one of the persons who has the most number of collaborators. And then, 
if you search for the internet some years ago, so I think after Edish dies, so, so people is creating a project called Edish number project. So, 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 okay. So it, it is like this. So if you have a direct publication with Edish, you have Edish number one. Okay. Now, if you do not have Edish number one, but if you have written something together with, with uh, Edish number one people, then you have Edish number two. Is that okay? Do you understand my point? So Edish number counts the number, the minimum number of steps that you are away from this Edish. Okay. If you are directly writing a paper together with Edish, you have Edish number one. And then if you are writing a paper together with, with someone with Edish number one, then you have Edish number two. Is that okay? So Edish number project tries to trace, if you type in your name, it tries to trace what is your Edish number. Okay. Yeah, of course, yeah, this takes time. Maybe it's not that accurate. So, yeah, so apart from Edish number project, there are some kind of different kind of projects. So there's the, what? My, if my memory is correct, there's the Portman project, not Natalie Portman. The, there's an American actor, actress called Natalie Portman. So Portman number is easily, same, similarly defined. If you appear in the same film or work together with Natalie Portman in the same film, then you have Portman number one, and the Portman number two, Portman number three, and so on and so forth. So people do this, these things. But when you see that there is some Edish number project, that, that means that this poor Edish is really famous, and then a lot of people love him. Okay. And there was a book. There is, there is still a book. So the book names The Man Who Loves Only Numbers. So this is talking about this poor Edish. So you can buy it uh, in, in the bookstore. Okay. Okay, having said enough of this, so, so there's no need, okay, to buy these books. But I highly recommend that you go to the library, have a chance to look at it, and see if you like it. Especially this one, this is so interesting, yeah. So this book has a lot of exercises, and every exercise has a solution. So this is something good, okay, yeah, something good, yes, for me, actually. And then, okay, assessment. So how do you, how do you, how do we uh, uh, evaluate your performance? So, so this is what we are doing all these years. So we, we have seven assignments. And then, so the best five of them So in total, it will contribute 50% of the marks. Okay, and then, so the remaining two, so also in total, it will contribute only 5%. So we will calculate automatically uh, which assignment that you score the best, okay? So you can, if you score perfectly for the first five, then you don't, you don't need to do anything for the last one, okay? And then we will have three exams. And that's easy. Each of them is 15%. So in total, it is 45%. Okay? So roughly speaking, the first two topics will be in the first exam, and then three and four will be in the second exam, five and six will be in the last exam. This is, this is somehow, roughly speaking. And seven, we don't have time. Okay, so this is it. And okay, before we, we talk about the, the class, uh, the, 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 the materials in the class, so these are some study tips. Okay, so first of all, uh, yeah, yeah. In, during this course, <laughs> there will be a lot of thinking. So try your best to, to have your fresh mind in the class. So if you, if you are going to be very sleepy after, after the lunch, then, then better eat 
less. OK. So fresh mind. And then the next tip is uh, don't be shy. Ask questions. OK. Yeah, actually, try your best to ask questions during the class rather than after the class. Because your question is usually also important to the others. Something that you don't understand. Maybe it is this other, your, 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 your fellow classmates may also have the same problem. So ask during the lecture. This is the best. Okay. Yeah, there is no agenda of what has to be, fi what has to be taught and what has to be finished. Okay. As long as you understand everything, this is the most important thing. Okay. So ask. Okay. And then, yeah, try your best to do every assignment. And, and then, so for the assignment, our policy is like this. So Simon will, will, will really check whether you are copying others', others assignment. But it doesn't mean that we don't, we don't want you to work together with your, 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 your friends. So we really encourage you to work together in groups. Okay? But just to make sure that it's not copy, when you work with your groups, work, work, discuss ideas, whatever. But when you write the solution, write your own solution. Use your own words. Okay? So there is no point in, in copying others, right? When you have already known how to solve a certain problem. So try your best. Okay. Yeah, discuss is always the the best because this is a math course and then for a certain thing that we are asking you to try, then there is there can be many ways of solving solving it. For instance, the same problem that you will see inside this course, you can solve it using permutation and combination techniques. You can also solve it using generating function techniques. You can also solve it by looking at the recurrence relation structure. So the same thing, you can have different ways of solving. So, so by discussing with your friends, you are actually l improving your chance to, to learn. So, so this is we, 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 we hope that you can do. Okay. And then, and then, ah, yes, the last thing is most important. It is to have fun in the course. And to make it more funny, yeah, I will try to ask you IQ questions. So this is my habit. So, yeah, hope you like the questions. Thank you.